Today I'm going to be showing you this wonderful home for sale in the Winterwood Estates community in Kent, Washington, which is in South King County, Washington. The price will be in the description below. This wonderful home is built in 1985. It's a four bedroom, 2.75 bathroom home, 3,020 square foot is the house size and it's on over one acre of a lot size. It also has a large three car garage which is over 800 square feet and it comes with a detached accessory dwelling unit. Without further ado, let me show you the home. While we start out by touring the neighborhood, I wanted to remind you that this property is proudly listed by Beth Grotlution at Kello Williams Seattle Metro. One thing that I like to do on my tour videos for my out of town folks that watch this channel is show you how far these properties are from the major cities in the area. So with that said, this Winterwood Estate community is about 40 minutes to all the way up to an hour and 40 minutes, depending on traffic from Winterwood to Seattle. And as for for Kent, Washington, Winterwood Estates up to Bellevue can be anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour and 25 minutes, again, depending on traffic. And finally, Kent, Washington to Tacoma, Washington can vary wildly depending on traffic. It can be anywhere from 28 minutes all the way up to an hour and 15 minutes. And now we're gonna start heading inside. Notice the landscaping as we head inside. While I was telling you about the different drive times. You would notice how much parking is in the front. You could definitely fit RV parking. This side of the house, you can get through this little fence here. And then on the other side, you can actually open up uh, the gate. It swings open where you can actually have more RV parking on that side of the house as well, or just standard parking as well. Maybe you could fit even a big boat back there. So plenty of parking in this uh, property. Again, large three car garage, which we'll take a look at in a bit. Now walking into the interior of the home. Notice the vaulted ceilings here. I love the natural light that comes through here. This is uh, natural hardwood that's below us right here. This house is definitely interesting with how that banister is up there. I think it's a really cool design where you can look out from below when you are up on the second story. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the architecture of this home, the design and the style. Does it flow for you? Again, the house was built in 1985, so you can see quite a bit of, um, you know, turn of 80s, 90s aesthetics in the house with definitely some updates as well. You got that skylight in the front there. And then we head through the hallway to get to the kitchen, dining area, back family room. This is the kitchen. Notice the huge, gigantic uh, kitchen island. The countertop for the island is made out of a stone slab. This is the back family room in here. We'll take a look at that brick in a bit that's on the fireplace. They put pretty thick baseboards through this house, which was nice. That's stone tile down below in this guest bathroom, which is a 0.75. Again, for anyone that's out of town watching these videos, I do say these a couple of times during these home tours because not as many people are familiar, but in the Pacific Northwest, we divide these bathrooms up into four quarters. So essentially a toilet's a quarter, a sink's a quarter, a shower's a quarter, and a tub's the final quarter. So if a bathroom has a shower but not a tub, as long as it has the sink and the toilet, it would be a 0.75. So that here's the pocket door that actually heads into that doors right there by the garage. This is also a laundry closet. 
So it has laundry hookups down here. You'll notice with this house, they actually added a laundry closet upstairs in one of the bedrooms as well, which is pretty interesting. So you would have functionality to have laundry upstairs and downstairs if that's what you're looking to do. Not to mention the laundry that's uh, also, the utility hookups are also in the Dadu, which is the detached accessory dwelling unit, which we'll take a look at in a bit. We'll take a look at this when we go outside, but you can see from this slider door there that there was the parking spot for the RV parking there on the side of the home. Taking more of a look at this back bedroom here. Let's head on into the garage. So I could show you the oversized three car garage with plenty of space, plenty of parking, lots of tool areas. tool area back there. Natural light comes into the garage, both from the side window and the glazed windows on the three uh, garage doors. And there's also storage space above, as you can see from that ladder. So now we're going to test the garage doors for noise so you can see how loud this is or not. As you could tell, or maybe not from this video, to, to me, they sounded like pretty typical garage doors, no crazy screeching or just obnoxiously loud garage doors. They were pretty average. Taking a look at the outside here. Love the leaves already in the fall. Fall is actually my favorite time of year. We call it the fall days. We did not coin that. I know it's online everywhere. Taking a look at the panel here real quick. You'll notice that it's not a Zinco panel, which is great. I believe it's GE. I'd have to take a closer look here. Is it a GE panel? Yeah, definitely not a Zinco or Federal Pacific, which are the two panels that are recalled, at least in this area. So this is the back door from the garage that accesses the side of the home here. Again, there's that RV parking spot right there. Those are sheds, by the way, that you see storage unit sheds on the side over there, which we'll point out better later on. Here you can see the furnace and the hot water tank. There's where the filter replacement area is. You'll notice this hot water tank is properly earthquake strapped and it has the water heater expansion tank properly installed as well. Those are those are nice because they protect your, um, it's a tank that's added to the water supply pipe and it acts as a safety device and minimizes the risk of the pressure damage, bursts or leaks in the home's plumbing system. Not sure if you see them nationwide, but we definitely recommend getting them installed around here. Love the brick. And we will start to head over to the dining area or dining room. You'll notice it has a ton of natural light from the two skylights as well as the wraparound windows. Um, the lights are turned on in there, but they're doing nothing right now with how much daylight is coming through. I'm sure they would be really nice during twilight or the evening hours. And then you'll notice that it has some covered shade from the roof line 
coming over there. I believe the the roof, at least, that's been over the dining area was actually newer. That was replaced, I think, back in 2017 per what the seller stated or listing agent stated to me. Earlier, yeah, that's the stone slab too. W earlier when I was talking about the aesthetics being more, you know, turn late 80s, early 90s, the cabinetry, at least to me, appears like it was from the original cabinetry from 1985. Looks like those soffits are originals to, as well above the um, cabinets. Oh, notice the under cabinet lighting there. But they did add the hardware. At least to my knowledge, when viewing these types of cabinets that are in a lot of these 1985 to 1995 homes, they did not come with the hardware, so it's a nice touch to have them in there. All appliances stay, that's what that sign said. So this is a gigantic, uh, they're using it as like an office. Uh, notice the pocket door here. But um, yeah, this is a gigantic office in here. Again, a lot of ton of great natural light. So much storage, storage for days in here. You'll never run out of storage space if you use this as an office. I love the metal filing cabinet. It reminds me of uh, in my home office or I guess my uh, office slash uh, recording studio for YouTube videos, not in songs. I, uh, my wife and I, we built a desk out of just using um, two uh, metal filing cabinets and then we bought um, a nice wood slab to use as the, uh, the desktop and it looks really nice. The, the, the project turned out really lovely. This is the walk-in pantry here, as you can see. In the formal, formal room in the front here. Take a look at the window. Again, nice tall vaulted ceiling here. That's a coat closet, by the way. I can't remember if I opened it or not. <laughs> so we'll head upstairs right now. Let's see here, what does the sign say? Amazing neighbors! <laughs> New fur. so the furnace and the AC were stalled in 2017. Sa uh, matched up same room, uh, same year that they put on that roof above the dining as well. Okay, so you come up here to the landing and you can either go right or left into either the main bedroom or the guest the guest wing, I'd call it. <laughs> uh, really cool that it has its own wing. I'll, I'll show it to you in a sec. Just taking a quick peek downwards for any of my uh, followers that like heights. So this is the main bedroom. Again, natural light. I will sound like a broken record. That was a nice, that ceiling fan was a nice touch. That's a walk-in closet over there. We'll check it out. It kind of has that um, reading nook over here as well. And then this walks into the main bathroom. The ensuite, if you will. So again, this opens up to the walk-in closet. Carpet felt nice in this house too. Definitely does not feel worn out. Not sure of the year, but it feels either newer or well kept. I, de I would be shocked if this carpet was still from 1985, just of how well kept it is. This uh, looks like the original aesthetics to the home here with the light bulbs, the mirror, and the, I, I believe the, the 
flooring has been updated and then I would say um, let's take a look in the bathroom but the flooring's updated there oh this is another walk-in clo closet here and this one's actually bigger than the other one as well so this main uh, main bedroom does come with two walk-in closets and here's a pocket door to go into the restroom the main bathroom so this does count as a full bath because it even though it's detached it does have all four pieces that soaking tub right there with the nice view of your backyard in the dadu just to give you an idea of what it looks like looking down there or you know from the view of the tub and a nice skylight too man those clouds are sure pretty right now roof looked like it was in good condition this there's that little hideaway nook there where the toilet sits and then walk in you know shower with the pocket door saying hello <laughs> these are double pane windows I would say um, the windows do look original to the home This is a nice king size bed and you, as you can see there's plenty of room on both sides here. It's a pretty big main bedroom. All right, heading on over to the guest wing with its own door. Love the uh, windowed door. I will remind anyone that is watching this video that these types of tours I do on my channel and I also do very in-depth tours for a lot of my out-of-town clients. Uh, I work with a lot of people that meet me off of YouTube or social media that are from out of town or out of state or sometimes you know even out of country and they rely on me being the eyes, the ears, you know. Uh, these property tours can do a pretty good job at showing you what the property's like and I can let you know what things feel and smell like as well. Because sometimes, you know, houses definitely have a smell to them. Again, another skylight. Full bathroom in here. And then two rooms here. This is a linen closet. If you look closely, there's actually a lock on the inside, so there's the key in it. So, um, either this owner or the previous owner were using it, you know, as a, a lockable closet to store some things in. Kind of like a safe, I guess. This big uh, bedroom has its own office space or reading nook in the back there you'll see in a sec that's the well uh closet there also let you know that the seller has paid for their own they've procured their own home inspection so anyone uh watching this video is interested reach out to me and i'd love to send that over to you And I would say this is the probably smallest area of the house. I'm 5'8", five, 5'9", five, on a good day, and you know I'd have to be careful not to bonk my head in here. As you can see, <laughs> head's just hitting the corners here. There you go. Shameless plug, if any of you are watching this and you're looking for a realtor to help you buy a home in the greater Seattle area, I go through great lengths and detail to help you, you know, buy if you're out of state. I like to be your eyes and ears, but even for clients that live here locally, if you're just like some of my average clients that find it super busy to go out into our homes, one of my things that I do for my clients is I preview homes for them 
um, just to make sure that it's worth them taking a look at. So we will eliminate the home on paper first where I do a lot of homework to make sure that it will go with my client's type of financing that they can get. And once we've made sure on paper that it makes sense, uh, I will go and either take a look at it with them or you know, I can offer to do a preview tour, whether you're from out of town or not. Because again, if you're out of town, it it's a necessity. But if you're just too busy and can't get out to it right away, some of these properties go rather quickly. I like to get to it as soon as possible to help eliminate and make sure if it's worth your time or not. So if you're looking for a realtor that does a good job doing that sort of thing and the heavy lifting and the homework and, you know, earns their keep as well as, uh, looks for off market deals for clients, um, feel free to reach out to me. So I thought this was funny enough. When I first saw this wardrobe, I was thinking of Narnia and I did test it out and it did not take me to Narnia, but you could also see here that this is where the washer and dryer have been moved to. Again, you'll have that washer and dryer unit in here in the guest wing and you could still hook up some in the downstairs area as well. I was kind of pointing out this quirk that it's not a lot of clearance space if you have both of these open and the door open. However, again, it's just, it's so easy to solve where you just shut it. But I like testing design features in homes to their extreme. <laughs> As you tour the home, I'll tell you some of my recent success stories with clients. I just helped a client close in a property in Kirkland. We got it for, um, it actually, they got it for well below the appraised value. And even then we also um, nabbed the property for um, a ton of money below the list price as well. So that was a really good deal. We were able to do our inspection, make sure the house is safe for them, ready to go. That buyer was super happy with the results on that. And then another client I was helping over in uh, North Bend, we were able to actually get their property for hundreds of thousands below list price. Um, so that was another just fantastic client experience, super thrilled client. Our main job as realtors, you know, is to help help our sellers get the most amount of money possible for their houses and help them, you know, with their goals of if they're looking to buy something else. And then on the buyer side, my goal is to find your perfect home with the right terms. And it's, it's awesome when we can get you a really good deal and make sure you're not overpaying on the house. Take a look at this. This is that side gate that I was talking about with the RV parking right here. So one thing I noticed, it, I thought it was really pretty, this um, that patio that's uh, uh, under the overhang there, the covered patio. They did install a outdoor um, projector with a roll down projector screen. It's not too big, you kind of kind of see it in the corner there. Um, th these are the storage units or the sheds that I was talking about. They were locked up. I didn't get a chance to look at them, but they look, you know, decently sized. What do you guys think of this outdoor patio? Would you utilize it during the summer and fall? There's that projector system right there. And let's take a look at what this projector screen looks like when it's rolled down. This kind of brought some nostalgia back to, uh, these were really popular and I had them in uh, school growing up. I guess I would you would consider me an elder millennial. I think this is a pretty cool touch though. I 
I went ahead and turned on the outdoor lights so you could see what it looks like lit up. I bet this would look pretty cool in twilight. During twilight hours. And here's the path to the uh, Dadu, the detached accessory dwelling unit. You can see that pond there. Opening it up in here. Nice big open kitchen, vaulted ceilings. Plenty of updates. So this property does come with an HOA. The HOA dues are 228 annually. That's for common area maintenance. With the HOA, they do allow you to rent this out if you're wanting to rent this unit out. You cannot use it, that I'm aware of, as a Airbnb short-term rental. So it'd have to be a long-term renter. I believe the only thing that's not finished there is the, the stove or fireplace right there is not uh, terminating to the outside yet. So that they've not hooked that up yet. All right, let's take a look at the bathroom, shall we? So here is where the washer and dryer hookup are for this bathroom. This is the most unique uh, single person shower I've ever seen. It opens from the corners here. So both half of each sides open up here. Pretty interesting that it seals up. I wonder how you know how well it performs with those two um i don't know what you call them but squeegee areas connect in the corner there if it does a really good job keeping the water out let me know in the comments if you've ever experienced one of these showers or used you know used it personally how how well has your experience held up with the corner pieces like that i thought it was pretty unique Let's go take a look at the backyard. Take in all of the trees here. Get a good view of the house here from the back area. This is for any of you that like looking at the trees in the sky. I throw this in my video as well. So the lot line is where these poles are. 
So you see these two pole, white poles here. That's where the property line kind of goes at a diagonal. Ton of backyard space though. Do any of you that are watching have any good ideas of how you would fully utilize this backyard? Let me know. Walking past some rhododendrons here, state flower. And we are back in the front. One final look at how just amazingly huge this uh, driveway is. This cul-de-sac was pretty quiet the whole day while I was hosting a four hour open house and shooting this video. And one final look at the property. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed your property tour today. Again, my name's Aaron Morrow, local realtor in the greater Seattle area. I work with both home buyers, sellers, and investors in King, Pierce, and Snohomish counties. If you're looking to make your next investment or your next move to buy or sell in real estate, in nine days or nine months, feel free to reach out to me. All of my contact info can be found in the description so we can have a discovery call. And until then, I hope to be showing you around town. Have a great day.